Magic Tree House, book number twenty-one, Silver Words on Sunday by Mary Pope Osborne, chapter one. A light on the woods. Jack looked out his window. It was a dreary Sunday afternoon. There were dark clouds in the sky. Thunder rumbled in the distance. Jack stared down the streets at the Frog Creek woods. When is the Magic Tree House coming back? He wondered. Hey, guess what? Annie says. She charged into the Jack's room. I saw the light flash into the woods. It was just lightning, said Jack. No, it was magic. A scroll of magic, said Annie. I think the tree house just came back. I'm sure it was just lightning, Jack said. Don't you hear the thunder? Yeah, said Annie. But let's go check anyway. She started out of the room. Then she peeked back in. Bring your backpack just in case, she said. Jack was always glad for the chance to look for the magic tree house. She grabbed his backpack and followed Annie down the stairs. Where are you two going? Their mom called. Out to play, said Annie. Don't go far, far, said their mom. They come and come in if it starts rain. We will, said Jack. Don't worry. They slipped out the front door. Then they ran up the straight streets and into the Frog Creek woods. The woods were dark under the storm clouds. The cold wind shook the leaves. Soon Jack and Annie came into the tallest oak tree. Oh man, said Jack. You were right. The magic tree house stood out against the gray sky. Morgan. Called Annie. There was no sign of the entrance. Let's go up," said Jack. He grabbed the rope ladder and started up. Annie followed. They climbed into the tree house. It was hard to see in the dim light. Look," said Annie. She pointed to the piece of papers and the book lying on the floor. Jack picked up the paper. Annie picked up the pick up the book. Listen," said Jack. He held the paper close to Jack's and windows and read aloud. Dear Jack and Dad, Camelot is in trouble. To save the kingdom, please find those four special kinds to writing for from my library. Something to follow, something to send, something to learn, something to lend. Thank you, Morgan. Camelot is in trouble. Jack, what's that mean? I don't know," said Annie. "But we better hurry and find those writings. Let's go look for the first something to follow. I wonder where we should we should look for it," said Jack. "Where's the title of the books you're holding?" Annie held the book close to the window and read the title. "Yikes!" she said softly. She showed the books to Jack. On the cover was a painting of the peaceful-looking field on the blue sky. The title said, "The Civil War." The Civil War," said Jack. "Coal." Annie frowned. "Coal," she said. "War's not coal. It store it is a bit. It stores up is." Jack says. Unfortunately, she knew war was bad, but some part of it. Seems fun, like a game. I guess we'll find out," she said. Annie. She pointed at the cover. I wish we could go there. Thunder boomed through the woods. The wind started to blow. The treehouse started to spin. It swung faster and faster. Then everything was still, absolutely still. Chapter two. Terrible war. Glaring sunlight filled the treehouse. It's really hot here," said Jack. Especially in those clothes," said Annie. "Those clothes has magically been changed." Annie wore the long dress. Jack wore stretchy pants and the long silk shorts. His backpack was now the leather class bag. "Where are we? Where are we?" asked Annie. They look out the window together. The treehouse has landed in the trees at the edge of the field. The same same field on the cover of the book. It looks so peaceful," said Jack. "Where's our silver world? 
there, whispered Danny with a shiver. She pointed to the woods beyond the field. Jack saw the soldiers riding a horse out of the woods. The horse was covered with mud. The soldier bu- soldier's blue uniform was torn. His arm was bloody. Another man rode on into the field. His blue uniform was in rag too. His head was bandaged. Oh man, whispered Jack. Who are they? He opened the Silver War books and find a painting of some soldiers in blue. He read to Annie. 1861 to 1865. The Civil War was also called the war between the states because it was a fight between the Sultans and Northern states of the United States. Sultaners were gray uniforms and called computer soldiers. Northerners were blue uniforms and was called Union soldiers. So they're Union soldiers, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote Silver War, 1861-1865. Blue equals North equals Indians. Gray equals South equals Confederates. <clears throat> Jack looked out his book again. He read aloud. He read aloud. The Silver War was the crawl of and bloody war. More people died in this war than in all of America other wars they put together. One out of every five young men in the nation died or was wounded. That's so sad, said Annie. Jack rode into his notebook. Curl war. Oh, oh wow, they keep coming. Annie says. Jack looked up. More Union soldiers were coming through the field. They didn't have a horse. They looked <clears throat> they all looked sad and worried. Some of them limped. Some of them helped others along. One man trembled and fell down. I need to help, said Annie. Wait, said Jack. She started down the rope ladder. You can't help, said Jack. A kid can't help, but Annie kept going. <clears throat> Don't forget, we have to find a special riding for Morgan's, Jack called a loud whisper, something to follow. She packed her silver war book and his notebook and in his knapsack. Then she started, he started down the ladder. When he stepped onto the ground, Jack saw Annie's in the distance. The, she was holding on her hands out of the fallen soldiers. She helped him to get his feet to his feet. The soldiers slowly started walking again. Annie walked beside him. Oh, brother, said Jack, and he hurried to catch up with Annie. The sun was searching hot as Jack ran through the dry field. She was, he was ready in his stretchy clothes. He sat up with Annie. Together, they walked silently with the soldiers at the edge of the field. Edge of the field was Stimpy here. And everyone stopped and gazed at the side, side below them. Rows and rows of white tents. Thank goodness, said the soldiers beside Jack. We're safe. <clears throat> Chapter 3 Field Hospital. Jack and Danny walked with the soldiers into the camp. Outside one camp was a long line of the men in torn blue uniform. They looked tired and hurt. Many were blood, bloody and barely able to stand. Women wear dark dresses were giving out foods and waters to, to the men in line. Who are we? Where are we? asked Danny. I'll find out, said Jack. He pulled out their books and found a picture of the campsite. He read, During the Civil War, field hospitals were set up quickly near battle sites to treat wounded soldiers. Soldiers stayed in the field hospital for a short time before going back to fight or moving to the longer, longer hospital or being sent home. This field hospital in Borgna took care of over 400 paintings.
That's a lot, said Annie. Sure it is. It sure is, said Jack. He pulled out his notebook and wrote, Field Hospital, stand up near battle Battlefield. Jack read aloud again from the books. More than 3,000 women helped out as nurse during the Civil War. Nurse was a new job for women in America. Before the wars, only men had been nurses. Wow, said Annie. Maybe we can be nurses. Forget it, said Jack. Kids can't be nursed. And Jack wanted to find a special writing for Morgans and go home. The sad sound at the field hospital was making him feel sick. I'll just ask, ask said Annie. She handed over, handed over to the nurse cooking over the campfire. Annie, we got the missions, Jack called. But Annie kept going. Jack gave a sigh. He tucked his notebook and the silver words book under his arms and followed her. Wave of heat rose from the small cooking fire. The young young nurse was heating a pot of cup coffee. Flies buzzed everywhere. Hello, said Annie. The nurse barely smiled at them. He, her face was red and bended with sweat. Her eyes looked terribly tired. Where are you from? She asked. Rock Creek, said Annie. She, we like to vol volunteers as nurses. The young woman didn't seem at all surprised. We could certainly use some help, she said, sighing. Some of us can't have not slept for days. Why not? asked Jack. The wounded are coming here from the bad little battle near Richmond, said the nurse. More and more kept coming. It never seemed to end. Just tell us what to do, said Annie. While we feed the new pensions, you can go to the first two tents, the young nurse said, that, and give to the other soldiers the, their new meal. She pointed to the basket filled with bread and potatoes. Next to it was the lid and the bucket filled with water. Anything else? Annie asked. Just trying, try to give them comforts. The nurse says, how do we do that, said Annie. I don't have time to show, said nurse. the nurse says, but here's the list of things that can help. She pulled a piece of paper from her apron pockets and handed it to Annie. Annie read the list to Jack. Be cheerful, lessen swallow and give hope. Be brave, put aside your home feeling. Don't give up. Follow that list, said nurse said the nurse, and you can't go wrong. The nurse took a pot of coffee from the fire and carried it into the line of men. Follow, said Jack. Follow that list. That was she says, said Annie. Jack took a list from her. Don't you get it? She says, that is it. We found it. The special writing for Morgan's library. Something to follow. Yes, said Annie. Jack put the paper into his napkin. It was a, it was handed right to us, he said, smiling. We can go home now. Oh no, not now, said Annie. We have to help uh, as nurses first. But Annie, said Jack. She picked up the food basket, then basket. Then she started toward the row of white tents. Wait, we're supposed to leave, Jack says quickly. Our mission is over. The truth was that he didn't want. He didn't want to help. He didn't want. The, to be a round, wounded and surfing soldier. It was too sad. Bring the water bucket and the ladle, and he shouted. Then she disappeared inside the first tent. Jack groaned. She knew he knew he couldn't change her mind. He pulled out her list and, and read the first line. Be cheerful, oh brother, he says. Jack pulled the list back into his napkin. Knapsack. He picked up the heavy bucket. Hurrying to me after Annie, she, he tried to smell. Chapter 4 Freedom Fla Fa Fighters. Mm. Jack carried the water, bu water bucket into the tent. The tent inside was like a neighborhood, a nightmare. The tent was hot and stuffy. A dozen injured soldiers lay on. Mm, small cut. Some called for food. 
Others bang for water or just moan. Jax wanted to rush back outside, but Annie got right to work. She rolled down her sleeve and smiled. Hi, everybody, she said cheerfully. None of the soldiers smiled back. I have a good news, she says. We've brought lunch. Annie moved down the row of cards. She handed it, handed out a piece of bread and chunk of potatoes to the other patients. You'll be feeling better soon, she said to the one sick man. You'll see your family again, she told another. Jack looked around nervously. He wasn't sure what to do. Give them water, Jack, Jack called, and he called to him. Jack saw the tin cups beside each man cut. He picked up the first cup, work up. Carefully, she, li- <clears throat> she used a ladle to fill with filled it with water. Keeping his eyes down, Jax handed the cup into the paintings. He felt shy and uncomfortable. She, he didn't know what to say. <clears throat> Jack moved on to the next patients, one and then the next. He gave each wounded man a cup of water, but he ever looked he never looked right at any of them or spoke the word. Soon Jack and Danny had finished passing out food and water. Goodbye, Annie says. She, she waved and laughed at us. Jack quickly followed her. Let's go home now. He begged once they were out. We got, we've got what we came for. If we live now, the patients in the next tent will go hungry and thirsty, said Annie. Jack sighed. Okay, he says, but after we take care of them, we, we are living for sure. He followed Annie into the next tent. Just like the last tent, it was filled with wounded soldiers. But the soldiers in this tent were all um, African Americans. Hi, everybody, Annie says, smiling warmly. Again, she passed out tomato. She passed out potatoes and bread. She also talked and made jokes. Jack poured over waters into each of them and t- of the team cup. Again, sh- he didn't speak of any soldiers, but as he handed over the last cup, a pain patient spoke to him thank you for your kindness son said the soldiers the soldier says jack glanced shyly at the man on the coat she w- he was an ugly silver hair black man you're welcome said jack he tried to think of something else to say he will remember and his cheerful world you'll be get you'll get well soon he told the patients you'll be good with your family again the man shook his head no i'll never be with my family again he said quietly my wife and children were sold long ago sold said jack yes they were slaves said the man you were a slave asked jack all of us in this tent were once slaves said the man we run away from our owners and the uh, in the south of fa- fight in to and silvery to fight for freedom for our peoples i ran barefoot for over 30 miles to tell the union soldiers that the comforters were going to attack the man fell silent you are the very brave f- Freedom f- f- fighters, said Jack. Thank you, son. The man closed his eyes. Jack wanted to know more about slavery, but he didn't want to bother the worried patients. She, he pulled down the Civil War book. He found a picture of African Americans standing on the platforms. Platforms. A man, woman, and children has chains on her hands and feet. Jack read. In the 1800s, the United States was doubted over the issues of silver. The North wanted the wanted the silver the country to end all this 
all slavery, but the South wanted to keep slaves because more than four million of African American slaves work in the huge pla plantations <coughs> filled there. This the agreements between the North and the South last to the Civil War. Jack looked down the man's face. He looked very worried. She, Jack pulled the nurse list of rules from his knapsack. Lesson swallowed to give hope. He read. Jack pulled, put the list away. He leaned close to the man and spoke in a soft voice. One day, your great 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 children will be doctors and lawyers. He says. The man opened his eyes. Jack went on. They they'll help us help run the grievances of and schools. There'll be centers and girls and teacher and principal. The man stared hard into Jack's eyes. Can you see the future, son? He asked. Jack nodded. In the way, he said. The man smiled smiled a beautifully smile. Thank you, son. He said. Then he closed his eyes again. Good luck, whispered Jack. He hoped the brave man would live in live to live to enjoy freedom. Ready to go home now, Jack? said Annie. She had finished passing out the food. Jack nodded. As he and Annie stepped out of the tent, they heard something shout, She's back The horse round wagon was barreling into the camp. What's Who's back? asked Annie. Clara Burton's, the patient says. She runs this hospital. Clara Burton's, said Annie. I don't believe it. Who's Clara Burton's? asked Jack. He heard a name, the name before, but he couldn't remember who, who she was. Who's Clara Burton's? said Annie. Are you nuts? She ran to meet the wagons. Chapter 5 Angel of the Battlefield Jack st still didn't remember who Clara Burton was. She pu he pulled out the Civil Wars book and read, Silver uh, Clara Burton was a famous Civil Wars nurse. Then when she be began nursing, she used her own money for her surplus. She drove a horse around ambulance right into the battlefield to help save under soldiers. For this reason, she came known as the Angel of the Battlefield. Jack put the books away. Then he hurried to he hurried to Annie. She he looked at the woman sitting in the driver's seat of the wagon. She doesn't look like an angel, he Jack said. Jack thought the woman was very small. She had a plain, serious place. <clears throat> Serious face and dark hair pulled back in the burns. She wore the long black shirts and the black jackets. In the back of her wagons were more, <clears throat> more rounded soldiers in tone, bloody uniforms, torn bloody uniforms. They moaned and cried out. Nurses, both men and women, were putting the rounded people. Wounded man on sculptures. Clara Burton wiped her old head. She looked hot and tired. C can we help you, Miss Burton? Annie asked. Who are you? said Clara Burton. Jack and Danny, said Annie. We're vulture nurses. What we can do? Mm, what can we do, Bur Miss Burton? Clara Burton smiled. First, you can call me Clara, she says. Second, what could, what would you ride to me back toward the battlefield? They were move around it, waiting to pick up. Sure, said Annie. Jack didn't answer. After seeing all the stuffing man in the wagon, he was afraid of getting closer to the battlefield. And you, Clara asked Jack, her eyes serious. Her dark, serious eyes looked right into his. Jack didn't want to admit she was afraid. Sure, no problem, he says. Very good, said Clara Burton. Let's go.
Jack and Annie climbed up, climbed up into the driver's seats. Driver's seats next to her. By now, all the soldiers have been taken out the wagon of. Take out of the wagons. Take care of my new family members. Clara called to the nurse. She snapped the reins. The horse drowned and drowned ambulance rolled up, sending up clouds of dust.